Thank you, Mark, and welcome to Bowie's Creek, North Carolina, with the two-time national champion as a player at the University of Nebraska and last year named to the Carolina Panthers silver season team for his 10-year career with the NFL's team in Charlotte. He's head coach Mike Minner. I'm Chris Haymeyer, and we've got a lot to get to, but before we talk football, coach, let's talk about where we are right now. The Oscar N. Harris Student Union the newest facility right here in the center of Campbell's campus. Wow, what a facility. Unbelievable recruiting tool um, for the university and also for the football team. You have everything in here. You got a movie theater, of course, state of the art, places to eat, places to study. It's just, it's a, it's a dream come true. Great weight room, big for, for, for everybody. And, and uh, but this facility is top notch. I mean, when you spend this type of money, you expect great things and we definitely got it. Well, coach, it'll be nice when this opens up officially. The students haven't been in here mm -hmm. yet because as you know, your team, your coaching staff, you have been dealing with one of the most unbelievable and different springs and then summers that you have ever faced. How have you and your team handled the COVID-19 crisis? Well, I think the first thing is, is that you, you have to get back to center because you got knocked off uh, because we didn't have spring ball. We was just getting ready to ramp up um, the, the next week. And then the, the previous week, I think on Thursday, uh, we had to shut everything down. We was coming back on Monday to get spring ball started. And, and, um, and so I think initially you just don't know what to think, right? So you go home, you thinking maybe it's a week, maybe it's two weeks because we didn't know what we was going to do with school. Maybe we come back, maybe we don't. And, um, and so you just kind of sitting there waiting. So I think the first month or two was really just gathering information to figure out what you can and cannot do at that time. And, um, and so I think everybody kind of went home, chilled out and waited for instructions. We got our instructions on how we was going to do things. So we became experts at what? Zoom calls, <laughs> virtual meetings. And, and um, that, that was very challenging at first because you now got to teach football without being in the same room with someone. And that's very difficult to do. And so now you got to keep that going. And so our coaches did a great job. We adjusted, we got back to center. I think our players did a great job. Um, of course, a 3.2 in the spring semester, as far as academics, the best academic semester we've ever had as a football team. Uh, so guys adjusted and guys thrived through that pressure situation, which is really what we, asked our guys to do. Well, Coach, and on top of that, it has been a summer full of racial and mm. social activism. How have you and your team taken all of that into perspective as well? How have you dealt with it? Well, you know, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a black man in, in America, so just coming through there and understanding what's going on right now in our society and, you know, the, the, the issues that we pushing forward, right? It's always good to, to hear that as, as someone that's coming from that perspective. And then now you got young men, a lot of our young men, African-American men, um, how, how do they deal with it? How are they dealing with it at home and, and everything and all the different pressures that's coming there? So the first thing we did is as coaches, we had to get together, okay? And we had to discuss it. Now it's easier coming from me because I'm the head coach and I understand what issues we're talking about. I lived them, right? And I'm living them today. And so, um, you know, it, everybody had the floor. So each coach got, got a chance to talk about what it meant to him, you know, um, get educated on what's, what's real and what's not real as far as how we feel as a people and what we, um, you know, fighting for right now. Um, and, and so all those issues was, was talked about about four or five hour meeting. Um, and it got real, real in there. Um, guys shared their heart and, um, and then we responded to that. Because what I said to them is, you are the one that's got to talk to these players. So if you don't know, if you're not on the same page or we are not on the same page, then how can we then speak to our players to try to help them? And I said, listen, these guys are probably going to respond differently. Each guy, so it's, everybody's not going to respond the same way you have to be prepared for the response that you get because you don't know what their response is going to be. And, um, and so we kind of devised the plan on how to uh, 
um, you know, address our football team. And so each position coach did it in his position group. And, um, and so, you know, guys had their talk and, and it was weeks of that, okay? And so, um, of course, we got a sports psychologist um, to help us out. Um, and she was able to, you know, deal with people on the individual level. And um, I think that was very, very helpful um, on top of that. And so, you know, we, we've tried to attack this thing, just put it out there. Let's talk about our raw emotions, our, our raw feelings. And then how can we as a group come together to help move the cause along, right? And, and that's what we did. Um, we've, you know, I, I, I got to say this because our president did a great job of addressing the issue too. Because normally our university don't get into those type of activities. And for him to see the significance of, you know what, I need to get out in front as the leader of Campbell University and show everybody that, look, we, we are all inclusive. We love everybody. We're behind everything that's going on right now. And, um, you know, because we got students from all walk of life and from um, different races. And we got to be, become one. And, and really, at the end of the day, what we always say is one team, one heartbeat. That's what we need to be. Campbell's president, Dr. Creed, also, as you know, a huge football fan being from Texas. And I know he's going to be proud of your sophomore quarterback, Haj Malik Williams. He is the Big South Conference's preseason offensive player of the year. What makes him so special, Coach? He knows the game and his instincts. I think that's what it is. And he's not afraid. I think in anything that you have to do as a person, as a football player, you, you, you don't need to be afraid of what's going on. You, you got to take every situation and feel like you're going to come out on top. And that's the type of player he is. Um, you know, he, he's a guy that uplifts everybody else, too. I think that's the other piece. If you got a quarterback that can make everybody else better and play above their talent, then you got a great special quarterback. And, and I've always said, and I'll say it again, that he remind me of number 15 that I played with, Tommy Frazier at Nebraska. He has that same type of um, spirit and, and aura about himself um, to, to uplift the, the, the rest of the football team. And when you have a great quarterback, then the rest of your football team is going to be okay. On the other side of the ball, your defense landed three on the Big South Conference preseason team. We've got up front Brevin Allen on the defensive line, your linebacker from just down the road in Fayetteville, Justice Galloway Velasquez, and in the secondary, Darian Slade. What are you expecting from these three? Well, first of all, let me say they all three are North Carolinians. That's the first thing right there, is they all that way. And um, so they all from the state of North Carolina. So we're excited about that. Here's, here's um, what I expect um, for those guys is to lead the way of our defense. You're strong up front, you're strong in the middle, and you're strong in the back end in the middle. You got a pretty good defense. And for us to have three guys that's on the first team, um, all Big South selection team, man, that's big. That's big for our defense. And, um, you know, Slade is kind of the, the, the captain of the group, being the senior, being the older guy, um, being able to play corner um, early on in his career to move to safety and to be an all-conference first team selection last year at the end of the year and be a preseason one. That's what you need out of your senior. You need that leadership, and he'll be one of those guys that's leading the way for our defense. Coach, this is just your third year in the Big South Conference. Your third year is a scholarship program at FCS last year, three and three in the conference, your third straight winning season overall. This year, picked to finish fourth in the Big South Conference. What is it gonna take for your team to turn the corner and get to the top of the Big South? Hey, listen, it, it, I mean, Kennesaw State, great football team. Monmouth, great football team. Charleston Southern, I mean, I think we was a couple points away from each other. You could have flipped a coin, but great football team. Um, not slighting the other two that's behind us in Hampton and um, Gardner Webb because it, these, these guys are going to be there too. This conference is just a great conference. So you can't look at, you know, who's at the top. Um, everybody, you got to come to work and you got to come ready to play every single week. And, um, you know, we got the top two teams on the road. Um, that's going to be tough. <laughs> you go, you go to Kennesaw State, and you go to Monmouth, and that's going to be, you know, tough sledding um, for us. And and uh, I think the biggest thing that we have to do is that we have to just play 
our game and execute, and um, I think we'll be fine. He's head coach of the Campbell Fighting Camels, Mike Minner. I'm Chris Haymeyer, ready for an exciting season here in Bowie's Creek. And for now, we'll pitch it back to the Big South Studios and Mark Bryant.